everyone, welcome to another episode from Podcast Linda and Vision 2030. Today, I need you to imagine something. Can you imagine Saudi Arabia in 2030 with flying cars, flying taxis? Can you imagine? If you're a science fiction lover, then you are going to love it. Today, that's what we will be doing. We will be meeting people who are into flying taxis. Their companies, uh, they do flying taxis. And as well, they are the most influ influential people and ideas that they don't only shape the future or the world, they shape Saudi Arabia. So today we will be meeting someone who is really smart, but can you guess who is it? Today this episode comes to you from the heart of the EBS Saudi 2025 Forum, where we celebrate sustainability, innovation and urban mobility. Today our guest is a leading figure who along with her team and pioneering company is driving the shift in the world of electrical aviation. Who is she? She is Ms. Yvonne Winter, the COO of Flynow Aviation. And who is Flynow Aviation? They are a company leading innovation in sustainable air mobility with the e-copter. Hi, Ms. Yvonne, how are you? Hi, Linda. It's a great, great pleasure to be here. And I follow you for quite a while and your Aww. podcast. And it's amazing uh, how much you inspire the youth for Vision 2030 and for this exceptional vision uh, that Mohammed bin Salman uh, put, which is inspiring all the people here. Yeah. And to everyone I talk to, uh, they say they are, you know, um, vibrant and want to contribute and want to be part of it and Aww. you spread it to the yaws and you inspire them to really go and and uh, feel what they can do with it oh thank you that really means to me that's why i love you very much i really had fun with you in the three days of the ebs saudi it was really great time having fun with you and enjoying the vr um, in the e-copter it was really nice experience so can you introduce yourself and fly now certainly yes so uh, fly now is a company that uh, produces a modular system of e-copter electric helicopter flying automatically in predefined route. Amazing. And modular means that we have different air events. So first of all, the air taxis for a single and twin seater. Why only for one or two passenger? We always get this question. And um, if you usually order Uber or a taxi, you do that for yourself or for you and a partner. And you certainly don't want to wait till four other guests are joining you. True. So what do you do when you have a family of four or six? Well, you just take uh, two uh, twin seater and uh, that's it. Oh, <laughs> amazing. Yeah. Cool. And, and then we have as well other solutions for firefighting, for rescue, where we can transport people mm. lying. And what we start with is cargo. So we can transport 200 kilograms in the size of a Euro pallet. Wow. And our company is originally from uh, Austria. We have now a company here in Riyadh. We want to spread um, or to use that as our launch pad oh. and to produce here, to start here and to spread from here into the world. Oh, I'm really honored to have you in my show, my podcast. And it's really amazing to let people my age, the youth, know more about Fly Now and flying taxis that we're going to have in the future. As well, you do guys have AI platforms that turn ideas into real ones in just minutes, right? Into real applications, right? Yeah, yeah. that's true. So at the EBS, yep. we had a contest. So everyone could file his idea mm -hmm. in two or three sentences, how we can do more sustainable transportation solutions. Mm -hmm. And uh, the AI um, behind, and it's a company, Maconis, we work together with, uh, they converted in a prototype app that you can already take with you. Mm -hmm. And uh, then we can develop further this app so that we have already different solutions on how we can implement it. That's really cool. And then some people won and then they got their awards. It was really yes. fun. Next time, if the EBS again happened in Riyadh or anywhere else, and then you find Flyno Aviation, you should join. It's really fun, actually. So the next time is yeah. Cheddar 2026. Yeah. So join us there. Hope you will be there as well. Yeah, Linda I hope. Did a wonderful keynote speech there and uh, inspired a lot of people 
she participated in a panel and she handed the award to the winners. Oh, so right now we will dive to the questions. So I have here the questions and I am going to shake, um, shake it and then I'll see which question you will get. All right, so I'm gonna think, choose this one. All right. The first question says, tell us about your recent, uh, recent international partnerships. What do you look for when expanding into new markets, particularly in the Middle East? Uh, that's a nice one. So uh, first of all, I want to shed some light on how my journey or our journey with Flyno Aviation started in the kingdom. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, two and a half years ago, I had the blessing to be part of the Destination Deep Tech program at Kaust, King Abdullah University. Mm -hmm. And um, I told my friends and my family, oh, I'm going to Saudi Arabia. And they were like, really? <laughs> and uh, you, you have to know that in um, Europe and in, in the Western side, there is a lot of bias uh, fueled by the media, especially. Yeah. And um, they are telling a lot of, you know, not nice things about Saudi Arabia. Yeah, true. And uh, then I came here and I discovered all the hospitality, the friendly people, the vision and how it inspires people and the uh, fast pace of transformation that is happening in this mm, country. True, because we and love really to, de to develop all the time. Now, thanks to our Crown Prince, Hamad bin Salman, who did yes. everything, and as well, our older leaders, they really did great job. Now, look, Saudi Arabia, as being something that is really, really good. Like, in the, in the future, we're going to become something very good. Yeah. And I fell in love with the country. Mm -hmm. And um, I got the chance to be part of the ecosystem through cows. And Amazing. And more and more developed. And I found that this is a perfect place mm -hmm. to launch a new innovation. Mm -hmm. And um, then two years ago, I went to the NIDC, National Industrial Development Center, to the aerospace sector, mm -hmm. to Dr. Sama Al Chabari, and he said, he's a uh, aeronautical engineer, and he said, oh, this is a wonderful product, and we have a lot of use cases for it, but how do you want to implement it? Mm -hmm. And this comes, uh, links to your question about partners. And I told him, well, we do have partner companies that develop air traffic management system that do verti ports. We collaborate a lot with insurances and with all the necessary stakeholders to implement such a solution. Oh, I'm proud. And then you said, yeah, that's nice, but uh, we are not dealing with eight different companies. Oh. And I said, well, I will go home and do my homework. And actually, this was the starting point of our international nonprofit association called Sky Alliance for Automated Air Mobility. And I can proudly say, uh, as the president of this association, that we have gained so many members from all over the world, from Saudi Arabia, from the UAE, from Europe, from India. And the abbreviation of this association is SALAM, mm. because I deeply believe that um, by coming together, working together, developing this new means of transportation that contributes to um, yeah, a, a broader vision, a more joyful, a more sustainable, a more, uh, yeah, in inspiring form of uh, mobility. Oh, amazing. I really like the journey. Then um, it, we're in, in that journey, did you have some challenges or like doubts or something like that? Or you were like completely <laughs> positive? <laughs> um, you know, there are always challenges. Yes. And uh, the challenges will continue, especially because we're developing an entire new means of transportation. Mm. And what does it mean? Um, you can envision the technologies on the development worldwide. So there are 400 companies developing yeah. men carrying drones, if you want to uh, tell them so. Um, then the infrastructure is not built. Uh, the regulations are not there. Mm -hmm. um, the customers are not there. Uh -huh. um, the market is not there, mm -hmm. nothing. It's a development from scratch. Mm -hmm. And this requires a huge uh, collaboration between several stakeholders from the government, 
body, the regulatory bodies, uh, the different stakeholders from the industry mm -hmm. in order to develop such a system. Mm -hmm. And you can envision this like a hundred years ago when the automotive came. Um, then you had a lot of horse carriages mm. and uh, then uh, in London they invented the red flag. So yeah. every time a car was coming, someone with a red flag needed to go, to go in front of the car. Uh -uh. And then we had a lot of accidents happening mm -hmm. and chaos till step by step the rules and regulations were established. Mm. And um, for now we have the chance to foresee all the problems mm -hmm. and develop a system from the beginning that allows a broad implementation for different kinds of vehicles mm -hmm. um, in a highly safe, scalable and automated manner. Mm -hmm. And this is now the key challenge that we need to do. And um, as well, what I observe that a lot of our colleagues uh, from the manufacturer side, they say, oh, the regulatory bodies, they are so slow, they don't let us do it. Mm. But uh, they need to consider one thing. There is no blueprint in the world for such a system. Mm -hmm. So the regulatory yeah. body is like nailed to, to the wall. They uh -huh. need to come up with yeah. a solution, True. with a certification for the vehicle and as well for the operation. Yeah. Um, uh, and they need to make sure that it is very safe because in aviation, everything is about safety. Mm -hmm. um, so this is a huge, huge challenge for them. Mm -hmm. And we can only solve that together. Oh, I wish you all the best in the future as well. So we're going to go to the next question. All right. The question says, with the rapid global growth of the tech sector, how does FlyNow foster an inclusive corporate culture that supports diversity and empowers young talent and women on a global scale? Oh, nice question. <laughs> So you met my assistant and she is as well responsible for marketing mm -hmm. and I'm very happy to have her. She is from Russia and we have a lot of uh, other people, uh, other nations and um, now we are onboarding a Saudi lady. I'm mm -hmm. really proud to have her and it will be great. Oh. So it's, uh, it's important to bring the best people, the best talents from all over the world together mm -hmm. and to develop this. Mm. And um, as well, your question was about uh, scalability mm. and, and how you can implement that. Yeah. So these are different perspectives. And even before, so when we started the company, um, and you have to know a bit about our CEO, um, because he developed the company in such a structure mm -hmm. that we can really scale by using automotive production methods for the first time in aviation. Oh my God, amazing, so incredible. Uh -huh. So uh, we want to do production here in Saudi Arabia. And when we are in full swing production, we can produce 10,000 e-copter per year oh. in one shift. And oh. uh, we can take a second and a third shift so we can produce 30,000 e-copter oh per, per year. Wow, oh, mashallah, good this luck. Is completely different uh, yeah. than every approach so far in the aviation industry. Mm. And um, our CEO, he developed satellites for six years, then went to the automotive industry, Opel, Porsche, then BMW. Mm. He spent 20 years at BMW. There he developed the i8, the i3, the Z4, the Gran Turismo. Inshallah. I think he is the only person in the world that actually built three hydrogen fuel cell cars. And then he went to China. Uh, to the largest SUV manufacturer, Great Wall Motor, where he was responsible for the platform for battery and fuel cell cars. Mm -hmm. So he knows how to industrialize. He's a pilot himself oh. for planes and helicopters. Oh, wow. He built his own plane that he flew. Oh, really? And so he is the most exceptional engineer I know. He's a real genius. Wow. And he's got all the network from his background that helps us to develop this. Wow. And um, this is our 
greatest USP I would consider. Wow, that's really great. So genius, mashallah. Yeah. Then we're gonna go to the next question and all right. Innovation requires boldness and risk taking. What has been the most significant strategic decision Flynow has ever made so far? <laughs> yes, it takes a lot of boldness and you're completely right. So when Jürgen uh, Greil, who I co-founded the company with, came with this idea and he developed it already 10 years in his head before he asked me to join the company uh, and, and to, to found it with him. Um, it took me actually three months to do the decision if I want to join or not, mm. because I already knew that this is going to be a long, long ride. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And um, I'm very happy that um, he really knows all the crucial steps to get there, to get to start of serious production and to market it. And therefore, even before we founded the company in 2019, uh, he went to uh, the air yeah, authorities in Austria, told them our concept, showed them what we want to do and how we envision the whole thing. And after the air authorities said, we like it, we support you, then we founded the company. And I think this was the best way to do it because from the very beginning, we um, every hard and software development, we pre-align with the authorities um, <laughs> and therefore they are on our journey together with us from the beginning. And I think this was the most critical um, decision to make. Mm. And uh, yeah, then you always have uh, to face a lot of issues, yeah, especially bumps, when you're a yeah. young company, the whole funding process is critical. And everyone says, oh, this is not going to happen. And what about the regulation? And what about the market? And where do you want to start? And you know, they all see problems. They yeah. don't see solutions. Yeah, that's... The and, and, and that's where we come in. Yeah. And um, we told them, okay, we have a solid path to uh, to regulation and we proved that. So end of 2022, we got the first approval from the air authorities to test our helicopter. And now we are on the step to increase the so-called sale level, but this is too technical, which allows us to do commercial cargo transportation. Mm. And this year we bring a flying helicopter here and do oh. a sandbox with different stakeholders in the kingdom. And oh I'm my really God. excited to start it. You, you got me also excited. <laughs> wow. And about the solutions, that's why I also said in my speech at the EVS, I said and about fostering global conversations that focuses around solutions, not excuses, because yeah. What do we need from excuses? Right. Solutions are more important because yes. that's what gonna take you to the right path. Exactly, hundred percent. So I'm so proud of you that you already oh. know that in such a <laughs> Thank you. Young age. You're Thank brilliant. you. <laughs> Thank you.